on me this week on some different things and I actually watched a I'm not going to tell you why I watched the show but I was anyway there was a something on TV that I didn't want to watch and and uh, I started flipping through the videos to watch a movie and uh, this movie In His Steps came on and if you've never read the book In His Steps by Charles Sheldon that book will jerk you up by your short hair so I thought you know what I'll, I'm gonna watch this movie well, I turned the movie on and as soon as it got started the acting is not the greatest in fact the acting is cheesy from this one what'd you say Trav kinda goes I don't know <laughs> anyway I was going to turn it off and do something else. I got a little tap that said, you just watch this thing. And so watch the movie and just, how many of you know we can get comfortable, we can get complacent, we can get, even doing the right things, we can get just chill and hey, we're good to go. Well, I got convicted on a couple things. I told the boys, man, I, me personally, on things that I'm not doing, that I should be doing, that I was doing, that I need to get back to doing. So one of the other things that hit me was in 2 Chronicles 18, there's a prophet in here called, Ma and I can, we're all going to get to heaven and God's going to laugh at every one of us for how we pronounce these names. Micaiah, it's not Ma Micah, it's Micaiah. Anyway, he was a prophet that always said what God said. And King Ahab hated him because he always told the, he gave him the word of God no matter what. And so here's one of the sayings that just gets me. It's 2 Chronicles 18, 13 says, But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him, talking about the king, I can tell him only what my God says. Because he had 400 other prophets that were telling him every, they were scratching his back, scratching his nose for him, doing everything and just sucking up to the king. And the messenger came and told this prophet, you need to join in with the other ones. And this was his reply. I can only tell him what God says. We need to get that from here to here. And we need to be speaking encouragement. Sometimes we've got to speak correction, but we should be speaking encouragement and edification and getting people lifted up and rocking and rolling. Amen? All right. Enough of that. We've got a couple of announcements. Miss Gina, jump up here. It is good to have Gina and Marshall and the crew back. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your prayers while we were gone. We felt them and appreciated it very much. His dad is settled into a nursing home and is slowly healing. So we praise God for that. Um, I want to thank everybody who helped with Nerf Wars. I know that Pastor JT did for me the day after, but thank you guys so much. I hope you had as much fun as we did. But it was a lot of fun, and I just want to thank you for coming and for helping, and we will be doing it again in a few months. Um, Due to this crazy last two weeks we've had, we're not going to start the Friday Night Kids Club until April. So um, just give us some time to recoup a little bit. So there won't be Friday Night Kids Club. It won't start until April. So after Easter and everything. Um, but we are still going to do the family small group on Wednesday nights. This will be the last Monday that we have it at our house. I know a lot of our crew are gone this week, but it will be at our house this Monday, and that'll be the last one. And so then starting March 7th, we'll be having the family small group here at the church. It's a Wednesday night. It'll start at 7 o'clock, and it's for parents and grandparents who are raising their kids, whatever. It's, just, it's, it's to help. I'm still a little fogged. I'm sorry. So my brain doesn't work too well. It's geared towards helping us raise our kids in a godly manner. I think that after everything that we have seen happening on the news lately, it shows us even more how God needs to be in the center. And number one, not just in our lives, but we need to be examples for our children. So they're choosing him first and foremost as well. 
And this small group is going to really help equip all of us parents and grandparents to be able to pour that into our kids. Um, so I encourage all of you that have kids or are raising your grandkids, whatever, to come. It'll be at the church Wednesday nights at 7. And we will have my two daughters who are 15 and 13 will watch the younger kids. So I know some of you have younger kids and haven't been able to attend some of the other small groups. You can come to this one because they will be watching the younger ones. Thank you. All right on. All right on, right on. Leo, jump up here. I'll make this quick in here. This is great what Pastor says tonight. Get out of your comfort zone. The street ministry and set free is doing that again. Mm -hmm. This year we're gearing up like we never geared up before. We've been blessed with people that are here in this congregation who are stepping out of that comfort zone and getting out of the box and says, I want to be there. I want to do this. We're getting to the point where we got to cover ourselves. So we're looking for a cameraman. We Say have all bit. the stuff. Say that one more time a little louder. Camera person. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it didn't make any difference, male or female, but <laughs> yes. One that's got a lot of courage, one that can keep the camera going when the action hits. It's very crucial that this does happen. So one of the qualifications has got to be faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Not really, but if there's one man that can tell you about working on the street, it's Pastor JT. Not everybody has a knife at their throat and keep preaching the Word of God. And look where he's at today. Bless God. Hallelujah. Anyway, if you're interested, get with me or one of the team. we got some beautiful people that are coming forward now, and that is great. Right on. How many of you have a cell phone? The rest of you lying to me or come on? <laughs> how many have a cell phone? How many of you have a cell phone? Okay. So, do you, do you know that most dumb phones have a camera on it? All dumb phones. I, it's smartphones. I just call it dumb phones because sometimes I'm way dumber than the smartphone is has a camera on it that you can, you know, we don't need to go out and purchase a camera for this that you can film right on this and if nothing crazy happens, you just dump it and away we go and start with another one. So um, I'm going to be preaching a little bit on kind of what he's talking about on some of the craziness that's going on around and uh, we just got to get bold with our witness and, and stand for Jesus Christ and away we go, okay? Stuff and party. We're going to have another one on Monday from 5 to 7.30. Mikey said there was in and out of here 22 people last Monday and you guys stuffed over 10,000 eggs. So that means we're a quarter done. Did you hear me? That means we're a quarter done. <laughs> so we still got about 30 to 35,000 eggs to go. So Monday, if we keep doing 10,000 at a whack, we're going to have this knocked out real quick. So if you want to show up again Monday night, 5 to 7.30, down in the, in the chow hall would be great. We're still going to need bikes. We need toys. Um, I'm not sure how are we on. We're going to need candy here pretty quick again too, aren't we? Or are we pretty close? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to do candy, candy, candy. I'm going to do toys, toys, toys. Best thing to do is go to the dollar store and wipe a shelf out on the dollar store. <laughs> and if you don't want to do that, drop something in the offering bucket with a check and write on there for Easter toys. And Gina and I and all her kids go to the dollar store and each one of us has a basket. And it is fun because the lady knows us after all the years we've been doing this. So they just clear an aisle for us. And just let us come through with six carts. And it is a lot of fun. So, But you can have that fun yourself by just going up and wiping out a shelf up at the dollar store and, and bring it on down. Okay? Uh, we were at the school on Friday, yesterday. Miss Morgan talked in both classes. This was... 
they're really starting to warm up to us. And uh, our second class that we had, man, there was a lot of a lot of talking back and forth and going on and this and that and, and Morgan just laid it on him that uh, the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ and away we go. And it's still to this day, every time somebody says that we're in the setting we're setting in, I always look around to see who's there because I'm waiting for us to get pitched out. <laughs> But it's, it's been awesome. They got a substitute teacher in there in this room right now. On board and going 100 mile an hour with us. So uh, God's doing some amazing things over there. Amen? So just keep praying. We'll be back over there in a couple weeks and away we go. So cowboy, you are on. <laughs> All right, please join us in our set free pledge. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up, till I stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach till all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. <clears throat> Just real quick, it's exciting to hear about the street ministry getting to roll again. I want to share this real quick. Just when Leo is up here, Pass is talking about it. That we just need to get out and share the good news. Amen? <clears throat> Matthew five fourteen through 16. You are the light of the world. You are... You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way that you may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen? So I just kind of just wanted to roll with that, and I think it's exciting about the street ministry. And we just need to be out there shining the light in the world. So I think it was Tuesday night I talked about this. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago we kind of called our little table that the men's Tuesday night we just I kind of nicknamed it the crackpots. So I mean you can go either way with that. That could either be a you know they're coming to take me away type thing or uh, <laughs> but the the focus on it and what I really mean with that is is based on Second Corinthians four seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of our power will be of God and not from ourselves. It talks about earthen vessels in there, and that earthen vessel is a weak vessel. Clay pots are weak. I'm a weak vessel. But I have this tremendous treasure. But this weak vessel, I've got cracks. I got <laughs> There's cracks in my vessel. And I know that. But when we go into the world and we let that light shine, 
I pray that the light is shining through those cracks, through my, through my circumstances, through my trials, through my tribulations. And that's going to affect the world. That's what's going to penetrate darkness. And that's what we get to share. Amen? So in that, in that light, there's service, there's giving, there's praying, and just witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you bow over your heads with me, we're going to bring in tonight's offering and continue to celebrate. Amen? Father God, Lord, I truly thank you for this amazing evening. An amazing evening that we get to share. We get to give. We get to love on each other. Father God, what a groovy thing to just to get to come together and just be one body. A body in Christ. So Father God, as we continue to worship this evening, Father God, just open our hearts, open our minds. Father God, may we just fall in place in your path. Not our own path, Lord, but I know you will keep us on your path. So, Father God, just help us to establish this relationship that we have with your Son. May it just be fulfilled with your love, your truth, your life. And we just love you so much. So, Father God, we just give tonight. We bring in tonight's offering, Lord, a chance to give. A chance to serve and a chance to share your love. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. Let's all stand and we'll start with come now is the time to worship.
this weekend. And wow, how many knew him? How many heard his message? How many even got saved under his ministry? Amen. So I think this is the time and season for God to raise up more than one evangelist for the world. Every one of us is now an evangelist. And I believe that from before, but how awesome for God to make a way for one man to preach the gospel in such a pure and, and powerful way and open doors for him to be the pastor to presidents. Amen? Well, guess what? God is calling each one of us to be that evangelist to wherever we're at. And I know if you just preach what God says, like we, he mentioned, just speak his word, you know, many will come to know him, just like right here. Every tongue's going to confess. Let's be a part of that, bringing every tongue to confess Jesus. Amen.
Lord. Leaving everything behind. The voice of the enemy is gone. Amen. Jesus, you have given us life. We come to you, Lord. We come to your altar. We bring our hearts to your altar, Lord.
this year song here tonight let the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song let the king God, in the presence of our enemies. Lord, you spread a table before us, Father God. Lord, that there is nothing impossible for you, for those who love you and are called according to your purpose, Father God. And you called us each by name, Lord. Lord, that at your name, Father God, every knee shall bow, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be light in the darkness, Father God. Lord, take our broken vessels and shine through our cracks, Father God. Lord, those weaknesses, Father God, for in our weakness, Lord, Lord, you shine through and you are made strong, Father God, that your strength is in us, Lord, you work through us, it's not of ourselves, lest any man should boast, Father God, but Lord, you are the good, good Father, that you know what we have need of before we ask or even think about it, Father God, Lord, you are preparing things for us, Lord, those things that
that we take for granted every day, Father God, the breath that we breathe, the blood that rose, flows through our veins, Father God. Lord, you make it all possible. We were created by you and for your good pleasures to do your good works, Father God, that others would see our good works, Lord, and glorify you, Lord, that they would not see us, but Lord, that you would be glorified in us. Make us vessels, Lord, ready to be used by you. Let us not be afraid of the world, what it can do, Lord, but be fearful of you, Father God, who, Lord, who divides a soul, Father God, who takes our souls, Father. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Have your way tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good stuff. All right. I'm going to apologize to you right off the bat because we're going to go fast tonight. And so you three hang on to your horses, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Tanya mentioned a little bit there, Billy Graham passing away, 99 years old. God called him to be a minister around 16 years old. Guy, he fought with God out in the middle of the woods until he finally surrendered and then it was full steam ahead away he went and touched millions, maybe billions of lives. I don't know, but that man around the world touching people's lives and his basic message was God loves you. God loves you. And we need to get that into our hearts and into our heads. God loves you no matter what we do. He still loves you. Even when you're in the deepest sin, God still loves you. He wants you to repent and turn around. But there's nothing you can do that's not going to cause him not to love you. And the other thing was that Jesus died for your sins. That was his two main messages. Come to Jesus and he'll take care of you. Won't be easy. But it sure be a whole lot more peaceful. Amen? All right. So, can I get into your stuff real quick? And then I'll jump out of your stuff. How's that? Okay. Are you ready? So why are you here tonight? Okay. Why are, you, why are you... Let's not even just put here tonight. Why do you go to church? So let me give you three, three things. <laughs> I believe there's, and I'm going to read what I wrote because I want to make sure I say it the right way. I believe there's three types of people who come to church. One is those who are searching. They're looking to see if this is real. They're searching for God. They're searching for, they're searching for something. And we all know, those of us that are born again, all know that they're searching for God. They just don't know that's what they're searching for. Because that void that we're looking for, that peace that we're missing... That chunk, it's gone inside. It needs to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And we've done all sorts of stuff. We've done dope. We've done women. We've done booze. We've done porn. We've done go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Trying to fill that. And how many of you have, have filled that and had peace? Come on. I, there's, if you raise your hand, I'll call you out. Don't do that. All right. Sin is fun for a season. Hello? Sin is fun for a season, but you're going to get called on the carpet later on. All right. The second person, I believe, comes to church is the player. You say we're Christians, but it's just an act. You might like the people, you like the fellowship, you like what the church has to offer, but you know one word, one action, one wrong step by someone, and you're gone. And you go to the next place. And you like how they, oh, you like how Tanya sings. Or you like how the kitchen crew down there treats you when they feed you. Or they like, you like the greeters when they come in here. And all it does do is one person, and it's usually me, that says something or does something that you do not like, and you, cup says, you're out of here. Okay? The third person is the passionate follower of Jesus Christ. You're here to encourage others. You're here to be encouraged. 
You want to win people to Jesus Christ and you're leading by an example. It's a lifestyle. You walk what you talk. And I'm praying that that's where we all get to be as passionate followers of Jesus Christ. So when somebody looks at us, they say, you know what, I know they're not perfect. I love what cowboys said, they're crack, we're crackpots. We really are. They see us and they know we're not perfect, but they know that we're in love with Jesus Christ and we'll do anything we can to help them out. My daughter was telling me a story was it somebody at school she had met? You remember the story about the lady yelling at her? At the people? Sky. Anyway, don't make any difference. I'll just, I'll summarize it real quick. She was telling somebody where she lived and they were saying, oh gosh, I hope you're not the one that was yelling at us. And she's like, yelling at you? Yeah, well we were parked by this place. And this person was screaming and yelling at us to get out of there. And the person that was screaming and yelling at them to get out of there was a so-called and they knew that. Anybody ever cussed anybody out driving down the road? You say, what? You? Yeah, oh yeah. I had it tonight. <laughs> Coming down 10, just getting into town. Truck pulls right out in front of me. I'm like, okay, so I kind of just pull in. And then no blinker, no brake lights, no nothing. Just almost stops and turns. Praise the Lord. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, anyway, I got to go fast. <laughs> I want to encourage every one of you, we're in a war. Whether you know it or not, we're in a spiritual battle. And there's going to be forces coming at, just look at what's on TV, look at what's going on. And I want to, I want to address one thing that happened this week. We had a national TV show that said our president, or not our president, but our vice president has a mental illness because he listens to Jesus. True story. I watched the clip myself and he hears voices so he has a mental illness and I'm like and you know the sad thing about it was the audience went <laughs> so everybody that was in the group agreed with that person. Now I don't know if I I was waiting for the boo or oh no or all that but no everybody because he listens to Jesus Woo. I don't know about you but I'm with him I'm mentally ill then because we need to hear the voice of our Lord and Savior all the time. And you say, well, is that an audible voice? No, I've only heard the audible voice one time. But I hear, I hear him speaking to me through this. I hear him speaking to me through you all. I hear him speaking to me through other preachers that I listen to and other Bible studies that we do. I mean, I got convicted by a, I can't even call it a B-rated movie. It was the cheesiest acting there was, but I got so convicted about that God used that, that movie to slap me. He'll use anything to speak to us. Psalm 53, 1 says, The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. And this, God makes sure we get it twice. He put it in Psalm 14, 1. It says the exact same thing. And you all know that, that the atheists have a national day, right? You didn't know that? April Fool's Day. <laughs> Sorry, Russ. <laughs> and you know, the cool thing about it is, guess what Easter is this year? 
April Fool's Day. We're going to get to fool that and give a whole bunch of Jesus this time. Amen? Amen. Alright. But I don't want you to get mad and I have to fight this myself. I don't want you to get mad at that national person that was speaking that stuff because you know what? They need Jesus. They're deceived by all the stuff going on. They're self-deceived. The enemy's got them blinded to the power and the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I first heard that, I got fauché. I mean, I had Tabasco sauce running up and blowing out my ears. How could you say that? But you know what? I was a stupid fool back in the day too. I said a whole bunch of stupid things about Christians. If you don't believe me, talk to that man right there because he took a whole bunch of my crap before I got saved. And he's just not amen and to say amen. He's saying amen because that's the truth. I was a stupid fool. And I'd mock Christians. But thank God I had people praying for me. And we got to do the same. Don't, if you're going to get mad, get righteously mad and start praying for them. But God's word tells us if we are his sheep, we're going to we're going to know it. We're going to not only hear it, we're going to know it. So turn to John chapter 10. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go fast on you here, kiddo. John chapter 10, I'm going to start in verse 1 and read a bunch here. So hang on, here we go. It says, Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am. I love it when he says I am because that goes all the way back to the beginning. God said what? I am. I am. You tell him who sent you? I am sent you. Very terribly I tell you I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my fathers, from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? The sheep hear what? His voice. His voice. And they don't only hear his voice, they Listen to it. But some of our problems, some of my problems, is I hear it and I listen, but I don't obey him. Hello. 
You know, there's a lot of things in here that are really controversial in the world. And if we're going to speak the truth, you're going to get hammered. That's just the way it's going to go. That's the bad news. But the good news is, if you keep speaking the truth, when you go to meet Jesus, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter your rest. Ooh, that's going to be a fun time. But we got to get busy before we, that time comes. All right, I want to give some of these things here. This is God speaking personally to people. God personally called Abraham in Genesis 12. The angel of the Lord, which I believe is Jesus in the Old Testament, called Gideon in Judges 6. The prophet Samuel was told by God to anoint David in 1 Samuel 16. God personally called Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1. Moses at the burning bush. He's talking to God in Exodus 3. In fact, he went into the tent of meeting and talked to God face to face. Samuel in the tabernacle, 1 Samuel 3. Paul on the road to Damascus when he got knocked off his donkey. We need to get knocked off our donkey sometimes. Hello? And listen to what's going on. And the disciples, when Jesus spoke to them, what did he tell every one of them? Follow me. If you're part of the kingdom of God, guess what? You're going to hear his voice. Now I know people have come up to me many, many, many times. How do you know that it's God? Does it line up with this? If it lines up with this, guess what? The enemy ain't going to tell you to do what the Bible says. He might take a little chunk of it, like he tried to do with Jesus. But we got to go back in here and make sure it's the 100% truth what he's telling us to do. He's not going to tell us to go out and stand, hit somebody in the face. Hello? He's not going to tell you to go do something stupid. Well, <laughs> we might think it's stupid, but he doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll send us into places where we're thinking this is crazy and God's going, go on in there. I got a, I got a purpose for you to go on in there. Oh. It's a lifetime commitment to follow Jesus. It's a lifestyle. And he says in Luke 9, 23, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. We got to do what? We got to deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow him. We've got some great ideas, we think. Anybody ever had a great idea and thought it was Jesus? Until we got down the road a little ways? And then it was like, uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, whoops. You never want your dentist to say whoops. And I don't want Jesus to say whoops on me either. But the cool thing about it, even when I do whoops, he's right there saying, come on JT, get back on the right track. Just get back on the right track. That's what I love about the grace and the mercy of God. He'll discipline me because he loves me. I got to thinking about the what well, I was reading in John there, just as I was reading that. Anybody hear the news about what the school shooting, about the guard that was literally, he was armed, had a, and he was hiding. And he wasn't running in. And you know why? He was a hireling. Yeah, well then the, three, the sheriffs showed up too, and three of those guys stood outside and hid behind their cars. If you're the shepherd of the flock... And he was hired to do what? Protect those little sheep. And he didn't do it. Now I know God will forgive him too. Of all those things. But if. I'm going to just say what I. She and I were talking about this. Today a little bit about the shooting. And all that stuff. And I had somebody ask me this last week. Would you really shoot somebody? I said you're darn tootin' I would. 
They come in here, they come into the school, they come into my house, they come into somewhere else and are trying to harm you all, trying to harm the kids at school, trying to harm my family. Guess what? You better be ducking because there's bullets going to be flying at you. Whoa, you're a preacher. Yes, I am. And I also believe that we're supposed to protect, we're supposed to protect each other. Now, I don't want to shoot them to kill them, but I sure want to shoot them to stop them. And then we'll pray over them afterwards. <laughs> and that's a serious note, though. That's why I said I don't want to shoot them to kill them. I want to shoot them to stop them. And then pray to God that God saves their, because they're going to, they need Jesus. They wouldn't be doing that stuff. All right, I got to keep rolling here. As much opposition as we have against us, Remember one thing, Jesus is greater, he's in us, he's greater than anything else that's out there. We've got, if you're saved, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and guess what, they all love us. How can we, how can we, I don't even know the right word to put it, how can we say that we're up a crick without a paddle? He made the paddles. He made the crick. <laughs> he made it all. And he gives it to each and every one of us to benefit his kingdom. So we need to use the things he's given us to do what? To help other people see the goodness of Jesus Christ and come into the kingdom of God. I get so excited when the kids start asking questions at school and pointed questions about Jesus. Are you serious about this, or is this just a fad? That was one of the questions. And you know what I think a lot of, why they ask that question? Because they've seen a lot of people get serious about Jesus, and it just is a fad, and then it fades away, and then they're right back doing the same old thing. Anybody of you know anybody? Maybe that was you. The enemy, circumstances, tribulations, trials, gossip, slander. He's greater than all that stuff that will come against you. 1 John 4.4. 4. And I'm not going to read this, but if you go mark this down. Psalm 139, 1 through 18. Read that tonight. That's true involvement, action with Jesus Christ. God knows me. You know that? He knows me. It says he knows every hair on our head. Well, you don't have to worry about me, but there's a sum of you that he knows. He knows every hair on your head. He knows what you're going to say. And he still loves us. He knows my true hearts, and he knows my true convictions. And so here we go. I'm just going to lay this out. I, we, we've got to make a choice. Am I going to follow Jesus? Am I going to go after him 100%? Or am I just going to say, no, I'm not? Because you know what? There really is no middle ground because partial obedience is still disobedience. When God asks us to come to him and we say, well, yeah, I'll just give you a little bit. But I'm not going to give you this part of my life. He wants it all. He wants to open the closet, clean the closet, paint the closet. Anybody walk down this hallway out here lately? The last couple of weeks? Man. Father, forgive me for... I used to call it the dead pastor's hallway because the church before I had all the pastors in there from, I don't know when this place started, they had all their pictures on the wall in there. And it, it was kind of dark. Now, the boys painted it the other day, you turn the lights on, you think you're in the emergency room. <laughs> I mean, it's bright. And that's what we need to do. We need to clear out all the stuff tear out all the old walls and we tore a wall out and guess what we found? We found a drinking fountain behind one of the walls. We've been here four years and never knew that drinking fountain was there. When God clears stuff out, guess what? We're going to find some stuff in, in us that's really good and it works. The drinking fountain works. Crazy. God will clear some stuff out and he's going to go watch this. Shh, and you're going to go, oh my gosh, it works in me. <laughs> I wouldn't drink the water out of it right yet till we get it all cleaned out and all that stuff. But it's been sitting there. 
I don't know how long that wall, that might have been 30 years that sucker was sitting behind a wall. But guess what? Even at 30 years, guess who God's chasing? <laughs> guess who God's chasing? You could be 30 years down the road. He still loves you enough. He's going to chase you and tear all that stuff out if you'll let him. And you know why we tore the stuff out of there? Because we had a wreck. We had a water leak. We had a, we had a tragedy go on. And by tearing out, we found all this stuff. You know what? Most, most every one of us, when we came to Jesus, something was going tragically wrong in our lives. And he tore out the wall, found the life of water, the living water in us, and turned it on. Come to Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. One more thing. This was in our, in part of the movie too. Do we, do I look at everything I do in light of the call that Christ has upon my life? The movie was, a, what would Jesus do? Do I look at everything? And I wasn't. There's one of the things God convicted me of. I was doing a lot of things for, for me. And you know what? I was good with that. Because I was also doing good stuff. I was doing godly stuff. And even in the godly stuff, I was still doing some of it for, for me. You know something's happened to you. Have you truly submitted to God's call? And I love that one part that she was, they were saying in the song, Jeremiah 29 says, there's fire shut up in my bones. In fact, if you guys can pull that up real quick, Jeremiah 29, we're going to close with this one. And this is Jeremiah's having a rough time with God in this chapter. He's actually complaining to God. He's mad at God of all the things that are going on. But in, ver in chapter 20 and verse 9 it says, But if I say I will not mention his word, talking about God's word, or speak any more in God's name, his word is in my heart like a fire, shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. If you got God's word in you, it's, it's, I want to get out of there. There's no such thing as a rat hold Christian. It really isn't. How many of you heard, or maybe you said this before too, my religion is private. It's just between me and God. <laughs> Some of you have said that. Well, no, that's, that's a lie. Because Jesus came down and told us all, told all us's to go and preach the gospel to everyone. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to teach them this. So how are you going to teach somebody when you're rat holding in your closet or in your room by all by yourself reading the word? So can I just encourage you tonight? Billy Graham's message. God loves you. But he just doesn't love you. He loves... He created each and every one of us. I was reading back here... Uh, never mind. I can say that. I'll get off on a whole other thing. But he loves us so much that he wants us all to come to Jesus. Because without Christ, you're not going to heaven. I hate to tell you that, but you're not going to heaven. It's the only way you're going to get there is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And him only. There's one way to heaven. There's not a whole bunch of paths. And that gate is really narrow. So if you'll just bow your heads with me tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this crew of people. Lord, I'd ask that you just continue to pour into our hearts and into our minds and, and just show us that the people we're passing 
Lord, if you tap us on the shoulder to say something to somebody, help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us just to reach out. Take that chance. We might get slapped. We might get cussed at. We might be called all sorts of names. But at least a seed gets planted in that person's life. Father, help us to look at the kingdom and not just our little, our own little kingdoms that we've created. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us to have that boldness, the courage, the strength to go out in your name. So help us, Jesus. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And if any of you need prayer, anybody wants to give their life to Christ, come on up here. We've got some people who will pray with you. We love you. God bless you. See you Monday downstairs stuffing some eggs.